Hello and welcome to another episode of Engage with E-Commerce. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Alex from Infinity. Hello, Alex. Hi, Nathan. You okay? Yeah, very well, thank you. And also, of course, joined by my lovely co-host, uh, Eloise Finch. Hi, Nathan. Hi, Alex. Alex, just before we jump in, Eloise, just a quick uh, 30 seconds on yourself. Who are you and, and what do you do? Hi, I'm Eloise. I'm CEO of Sell Beyond. We are a multilingual marketing agency that focuses on growing brands on Amazon in English, French, German, Spanish, Italian and Dutch. Perfect. And for me, Nathan Lomax, co-founder of Quickfire Digital. We're an e-commerce focused digital transformation agency. So we specialize in maximizing efficiency, profitability and scalability through the use of technology. So Alex, really appreciate you coming on today. I've heard so many great things about Infinity and I'm just keen to share with the listeners of our show um, a little bit more about the platform, what it can do, its capabilities, and then most importantly, some kind of key takeaways they can go and implement or almost from today, if you like. So yeah, to start us off, I'm interested to hear how did Infinity come about and at what point did you kind of get on the Infinity bandwagon? So how Infinity started is you know, quite entrepreneurial. A lot of how many businesses started it, it was a problem. Uh, born out of a digital marketing agency. So um, our founder was the founder of Jellyfish, uh, which is a large uh, multinational digital marketing agency. And in 2010, they had a, an issue and they weren't able to justify their client spend when phone calls were happening. So they weren't able to attribute those phone calls to the, you know, channels, campaigns and keywords. So they started doing it for themselves. And then they realized that a lot of other agencies were like, hang on, that's really good. We want that for our clients. So in 2011, we decided to branch out and become our own business and, and separated from Jellyfish. Uh, Paul, um, you know, sort of came out of Jellyfish, he exited there and, and is our CEO to this day. Um, and for myself, uh, I actually jumped on board about six months ago. So I've worked in call tracking for two and a half years. Uh, and digital marketing as a whole for, for eight years um, and I've been with Infinity six months and it's um, it's been a whirlwind six months. Uh, it's been fantastic, it's been really fun. Everyone there is, you know, it's really good team atmosphere and yeah, I'm really looking forward to the next six months and beyond. Awesome, thanks so much. Um, coming from an e-commerce background, uh, a lot of people that I've been speaking to have really been focusing on digital marketing um, since the beginning of um, COVID. And in a way, um, a lot of the conversations I've been looking at have been about landing pages and conversion and that type of thing. We've almost forgotten the importance of speaking to your customers at this time. So how can custom companies rethink their approach in this area, especially because things aren't going to change anytime soon and um, voice and phone is going to be a major importance because you're not going to be seeing people on the shop floor if that's part of your business. Yeah, so our new or sort of temporary normal is, is going to look a lot different. Um, customers are going to have questions and they're going to want those questions answered right away. We, you know, we know how demanding customers can be. We're customers ourselves. The basic things um, need to be clearly communicated so they can find them as quickly and as easily as possible. But other more complex things may require a direct line to someone. So they might need to speak to someone, as you just mentioned. There's also the fact that people are going to want reassurance. So empathy really needs to take center stage in our, uh, in our opinion. You know, if taking a call to answer a customer's questions about your, your dealership's new cleanliness routine or social distancing measures, if someone comes into your store when, when, they're, when they're back open, um, if that's going to give the customer confidence to buy, then really that's a call you should be taking. Yeah, that's a great, great point about empathy. Thank you, Nathan. And so... We talked a little bit about Infinity, how it came about. We've talked about your journey. Yep. You helped us answer the fact about COVID-19 and how that's had an impact. Mm -hmm. We've just started talking about how actually for some people listening today, I guess they'd associate call tracking with customer service rather than sales. And that's one thing that really stuck out when learning about your guys' products and actually call tracking in general is that it's not just for customer service, right? There's a massive opportunity to use call tracking in sales. Perhaps you can expand on that. Yeah, so the, one of the biggest um, advantages of Infinity is being able to understand what is, drive, what is driving your phone calls in terms of what digital marketing activity is driving your phone calls. So the marketing and sales function of a business want to be able to optimize the activity they're doing to drive more of the right kind of behavior, more of the right kind of inquiries, more of the right kind of sales. Now, if you don't know what's making the phone ring, it's very, very hard to do that. So if you're a phone-centric business, you might even be an e-commerce business that sells predominantly online, 
but your higher value, more complex products or uh, services are sold over the phone. So we work in retail, even though you wouldn't necessarily associate the phone as much with retail. Now you want to be able to know what campaigns, what keywords, what channels are driving those sales. And that's what Infinity allows you to do. Now on the customer support side, we can tell you that, okay, are certain areas of your site driving higher support calls? And if so, by understanding what is said on those conversations, can we improve the site content to make sure we're driving down those calls? So for example, most companies that have a call center, that call center will be one of the biggest costs to that business. They're very, very costly assets, call centers. So if you can make them more efficient, you're talking about huge cost savings there. So that means maybe something that's more traditionally associated with call tracking, but on the sales side, it, it's massive. I would say it's more of our business is on the sales side than the customer service side. That's really interesting. And I was thinking in terms of what you're saying about um, call centers, and I noticed on your website, you've got a lot of content, even at the moment, I suppose, especially at the moment for, for companies, for example, in the travel industry. In the era of these multi-aggregator sites like booking.com or even in the era of amazon.co.uk or you know big e-commerce, do people still really want to pick up the phone? And how should we focus more on um, optimizing voice? Like in, in, do we need to get more people on the phone? Do we just need to do better with what we've got? So, I mean, we touched briefly on empathy earlier uh, on one of the earlier questions and, and travel is certainly no exception to that. So. You know, many areas of it have been impact, impacted, be that flights, activities, insurance, tours, but nobody's going to know precisely what their first post-COVID holiday is going to look like. So um, things that people previously would be happy to book online um, without second thought might need that human touch first just to reassure them. And we don't see this change in um, things for our clients offering more tailored services over the phone. So our clients such as Ordinary Travel and Saga, but those are previously relying on purely online model may now want to rethink their approach to be more accommodating when it comes to conversing directly with their travelers. And I think it's obvious that travelers, you know, they've, you know, it's an industry where they've all, the customers have always done a lot of research, but going forward, I think that's going to be, you know, even higher. And with tied to marketing budgets going forward in a post COVID world, it's going to be even more crucial for the marketing teams of these travel businesses to understand where their phone calls are coming from, where their leads are coming from so they can optimize to get more and, and call tracking fills an obvious need here um, and also utilizing our products called conversation analytics so we have a product where it listens in and i say it it's it, you pre-populate it with keywords that you want to listen out for so if you want to understand how many times the word coronavirus or covid19 is said on your calls we can spot that for you using our automated ai system and that AI system can then pull out those calls for you and you can under, you can basically scrutinize and understand and find out what the sentiment of those calls are. So that was what you were going back before. That was what you were saying in terms of, is the content on your website working? And we understand that some people will need reassurance, some people will need empathy, like whatever you've got, especially in the travel sector, that might not be something you're at the moment you're gonna to wanna to bypass, but it could be, like you said, in e-commerce, you're selling a certain range of things, or you're selling something, or people want to make a particular type of order. Is your, is this, this come from call recording? Like, what's the deal? You, you have to figure out what's important, then figure out, could people have found that on the website or not? Yeah, so what, the, 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 the tool is constantly learning. So it, it's machine learning, so it's getting better and better and better and better. But yes, basically, in effect, it, it records the calls. So as you would do normal call recording, uh, and obviously there's a, a message to be played for, for GDPR purposes, um, what we can do is ask that to, to look out for certain keywords and you can positively and negatively rate those keywords. So if you want to drive certain agent behavior of the agent saying something, um, you know, by changing your messaging can actually work well sometimes. But like I say, if you're wanting to reduce the amount of support calls that you're getting around a certain topic, you can use our tool to understand those support topics that are being talked about. And then you can use that to inform your web development team or your content team say, right, we need a specific page on that, or we need to update the FAQs, or we need to make it clear, and we need to make the website journey more, you know, a much simpler journey so that users can easily find this information before picking up the phone. Alex, that almost answered my question, but a bit further, I'm keen to understand the reporting of these kind of systems and not just your systems. For some of the people 
we've got listening and some of the people that will listen to the recording, they'll be interested to know just how granular we can get with this tracking. Eloise and I are always talking about test and measure uh, and see what's working, see what's not. What kind of tracking can we get out of, uh, well, what kind of analytics can we get out of cool tracking? So it goes to the visitor level. So in effect, what Infinity is, is a visitor level call tracking platform. So that means that every interaction with the site is being, is being measured. So if, let's say, for example, you come through a, a, you know, a PPC keyword, you come onto the, a client's website, you then don't take any action and you go off. That, you might then come back through Facebook, you might come back through direct, you might come back through organic or email. Because we are tracking each individual touch point, we can not only tell you that that first keyword prompted a call when it eventually happens, but we can tell you every step of the way in between. And we feed that into the platforms that your, your clients and our clients use already. So we natively integrate with Google Ads, we natively integrate with Google Analytics. So the in layman's terms, the way I like to kind of picture to people is saying, just think of us as another goal within analytics so as you have a form fill or as you have a transaction or as, as you be tracking emails just think of phone calls now being something that's been illuminated so we're just another one of those goals that you can report on as granular as you can anything else interesting i wonder going forwards actually just thinking in terms of the tracking side of things the attribution i'm interested in alex is it if there was like, uh, okay, so someone comes to the site, they, may, they maybe don't call there, but then they call, but then they don't purchase and they call again, like, how can we kind of split attribution or actually is it only allocated to the last thing that generates the conversion? So in our platform, we have what we call a visitor trace. Now, as long as there's certain assumptions you have to make here, so the, the, the user hasn't cleared their cookies and that they're searching on the same browser or device. So let's say I'm at my work laptop like, like I am now, and I've only ever used this device to, to do my research, and I've gone through all that. We would be collecting each touch point, and that will be listed in our visit, visitor trace within our platform. In terms of your attribution, we pass the data into the other platforms of where you'll be doing your attribution. So if you're just using standard Google Analytics, Generally, that's on a last click basis. So that's what you'll get in terms of uh, in the data in there. However, if you're using more advanced platforms like Campaign Manager um, or you know, the, the premium Google stack, so Analytics 360, we fit, um, because that has one singular cookie across the Google stack, we fit into that. And basically, we pass our data into there and then they make the, um, the attribution decisions within their own platform. Brilliant. Okay. So in terms of where we're going, um, where you're going in terms of your technology, what does the future hold in, uh, in term, in, for Infinity? What's, what's the next big mountain you guys have to climb on? What do your clients, um, what are they nagging you to do that you know that you have to get on top of? Um, I think in terms of, uh, so we're a global company. So we have offices, two offices in the US with just Pre-COVID, we were just about to, uh, to expand uh, throughout Europe, uh, and we have a few offices in, in the UK. Now, at the moment, our conversation analytics suite is just in English. We obviously want to make that worldwide. We operate in over 75 different countries, um, so we track calls for clients all over the globe. However, unfortunately, at the moment, we can only offer our conversation analytics suite in English. Um, as you can imagine, it takes a lot to build that, um, and there's a lot of continuous learning. And the more and more clients we get on board with that, the better it becomes. Because the, as you know, with anything, the more data, the better anything becomes. So I'd say definitely that is the future. And, and understanding what happens on those calls is, is definitely the future of our business. Right, because I guess as someone that runs, um, uh, you know, I, I run a company that has a lot of multilingual stuff, the conversations and the keywords, um, that's going to have to be reprogrammed in all the different languages and, and the cultural context of those keywords as well. That's a big job. Interesting job, though. Yeah, exactly. Not, thankfully, not one that I'm responsible for. <laughs> you can't do anything, right? <laughs> There's much smarter people than me in charge of that, thankfully. So, Alex, whenever we're talking to clients, uh, we're always talking about accountability and making each channel accountable for yep. ROI and whether we're getting a return on investment or not. In your opinion, what are the top five reasons that cool tracking whether it's with your platform or not with your platform, is essential for any business, no matter what size they are now? So 
the number one for me and always will be is if you don't know what what's working you know how can you improve if you just rely on guesswork and that's no way to base a strategy and a, a lot of people don't realize that with respect to phone calls that's what they're doing they've got stuff in place for online conversions and there's very few you know retailers out there or anyone who operates in the digital space that operates without any form of tracking so what I don't understand sometimes is why is that not considered so over the phone for phone calls? Maybe it's because a lot of clients don't realize there is a solution in place, uh, but we're here to tell them that there is. So that would definitely be number one. Um, in terms of PPC, uh, you can't possibly manually optimize all of them. So call tracking and connecting uh, to your, your CRM can, op you know, can optimize bids for optimum outcomes. I'd say would be number two. Number three, call tracking technology can also um, route calls out of hours. Or give you alerts when you've missed calls um, and this is a feature that's commonly used in sort of property and automotive so if you want to understand you know what time of day are you missing calls you know what day of the week you're missing calls that might give you an operational insight into okay do i need more staff at these times do we need to broaden our business hours because we're actually missing out on, on a lot here and a big thing is is that if you imagine that a customer is that engaged with you that they've decided to pick up the phone they're they're in, they're in a in a buying mode or they're, they're wanting to research a lot more they're, that that's a serious buyer if you're not there for them in their time of need your competitor might be and that's the one thing i would always say is that if if you're not understanding these things and understanding when you need to be answering the phone then you know you could be doing a, a lot of detriment to your to your business oh, that's absolutely and a fair point did you want to sorry did you want to continue alex yes yeah, i don't no, carry on with you, uh, i was going to say but especially for um I know that on your website you've got a whole range of clients. I was really amazed at all the different size uh, businesses and the different industries you support. How long does this take to set up? I, the thing that would worry me as someone that knows nothing about it, but I'm just going to shoot from the hip there, is for example, if I was really interested in the keyword tracking, that sounds like a lot of work on my side to, to set that up and say these are the things that we want to look at. How long does it take to set up on your system to get some good call tracking going? It's actually quite simple, really. Um, there's two pieces of code for Infinity. Uh, one is a piece of JavaScript, and that can be deployed um, via Tag Management. So Google Tag Manager, for example, it's dead easy. You don't need to be a developer to do that. Uh, the other is what does the number of placements. The way that Infinity works is it will serve a unique number to each visitor that's on the uh, site at any one time. Now, there's just a small piece of HTML that needs to go around the phone number. And again, that can be implemented very, very easily. And once that's kind of up and running, in terms of understanding what keywords are driving your, your phone calls, you know, that you can start seeing results within a couple of months. It depends, it can be sooner, but it, as soon as that tracking is live, you will start to see the phone calls within your, our system and within your other systems. In terms of the conversation analytics, which I think was your, your second point, you know, you, all you would need to do is tell us what keywords you think are important. And a lot of the time you're already going to know those. So if you want to understand if the word buy or if the word book or if the word sale, or if there's, you know, we can spot if a 16 digit card number is read, we can also redact that information as well. So if, if basically a credit card number is read out over the phone, you can say with a decent degree of certainty that, okay, that was a sale. So you can log that as a sale and we can redact the information so it's PCI compliant. That's, that's really interesting, actually. I didn't, um, but the other thing I guess goes into that. So I'm getting in the technical detail here, Nathan, but does that mean that we have to integrate this with some kind of VoIP system or whatever that will give us 17 different numbers for each different web page that, we're, that we've got for, to know where it came from? No, it doesn't, um, thankfully, because that would be a nightmare. Um, so, in effect, so again, I'll, I'll try, I always try and explain things in layman's terms. So, if you imagine how an 0800 number works, so if I was to call an 0800 number, it actually routes through to a local number. So there'll be a destination number sat behind there. So let's say it's a London business. When you, you as the customer dial that 0800 number, it actually rings an 0207 number. That's all we do. So we, we ask our customers, what is the destination number you want the phone? Where, where do you want the phone to ring? And we just route all our numbers to that, to that phone. So the, the client has no idea the salespeople on the phone would have no idea that call tracking is even taking place if, if you didn't want them to. And what the way it works is that those numbers are in a pool that's like an invisible pool that's sat behind the website. And as soon as someone comes onto the site, we'll display that unique number to them 
someone else comes on, we'll display them a unique number. But they're all ringing the same phone. So Alex, one of the final things from me, I'm conscious of your time and I really appreciate you giving up some time to kind of share with us today. One of the things I'm really interested to know is whether you're using Infinity or not using Infinity as a platform, what are the kind of common mistakes you find when reviewing other telemarketing setups? Is there some things that the listeners of today can kind of make sure they avoid going forwards with telemarketing? Yeah, so a basic one is ensuring that the sales team are only getting sales calls. And I know that sounds simple, but you'd be surprised at how many businesses that this common mistake happens. One of the things we helped Stanner with, so if you do uh, Stanner Stairlift that, that you might uh, be aware of, was, was route their support and maintenance calls away from their sales team. Now, this is, of course, a huge benefit to both the company but and their customer ringing up. So the journey as a whole is an important area to look at. So our customer success events, we've, we've had talks from both Sky and BT who have given quite detailed breakdowns of how they've used um, what happened on inbound calls to help inform changes to their website that lighten some of the load on the contact center and help deliver efficiencies there. So one client has also adapted their scripts by seeing you know, people responding to certain questions and they've tracked better outcomes for more positive framing. So for example, if say, um, in saying, instead of saying, what's the problem, say, how can we help you today? And our conversation analytics suite can help ensure that the actual um, reps on the phone are using the right terms so the sales agents can, can be mo not monitored in terms of a, you know, a George Orwell kind of, uh, uh, kind of sense, but in terms of spotting, okay, is this, does this agent need more training? Are they saying the right things that we want them to be saying? And obviously if you're tracking the outcomes of these calls as well, so knowing if that's turned into a sale, you can see, okay, does this language transpire to a better outcome? Really fascinating. That's such a such an interesting uh, story you told us and such an interesting uh, company. I, I've really learned a lot, Nathan. Yeah, Alex, I just wanted to thank you for joining us today. Like I said, I'm keen for some of these, some of the new content we're getting out there is looking at partnering with organizations yeah. such as yours to give our audience some insight into the different tools available. I think you hit it on the, the, the kind of nail on the head earlier when you said a lot of these tools are out there yet a lot of people don't know about them. So yeah. for us, uh, Eloise and I, we're working with it, kind of retailers all the time. And so for us, it's how can we broaden their understanding and education of, you know, what you thought this was maybe once impossible. It's absolutely not impossible. And there are tools on there and we're going to help them kind of bring those tools to the forefront of their minds. So Alex, I really appreciate you giving up some time today. Thank you. I hope those of you listening enjoyed that as well. Alex, final thing for me is if anyone wants to find out more about your product or, or, and the kind of, uh, yeah, and Infinity, where can they do that? Do they connect with you? Who do they talk to? They can connect with myself. So I'm happy to, for you to share um, my email. But my email is alex.hughes at infinity.co. You can go onto our website, uh, which is infinity.co. There's a live chat on there. Uh, probably not best to, to ring the phone at the moment because no one's in the office. So please use the, the email. Uh, so it'd be sales app or anything like that. But yeah, I'm on LinkedIn. If anyone wants to connect me with on, on LinkedIn, it's Alexander Hughes. Um, but I'm more than happy to, to answer questions. And we have, you know, if any of your listeners are watching and are in a specific sector, we, you know, we do work across a broad range of sectors, as you mentioned earlier. Um, so we have sector specialists. So we have people that are, you know, equipped to, to carry the conversations in their area. And just a, a kind of message to the listeners as well is that there's nothing wrong with not necessarily knowing about all these tools, as, as you mentioned just a minute ago, when I joined um, the, uh, the MarTech space, which is what we're in, marketing technology, there were, what, five years ago, there was maybe a thousand vendors. There's now 9,000 vendors. That's in the mere five years. Like, if you can keep track of 8,000 additional vendors in one space in five years, you know, you are doing very, very well and you don't need my help. So, um, you know, it's honestly, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with reaching out and, and kind of learning what's out there. So, and I'm more than happy to give that information. Brilliant. Just a bit of feedback from Ines, who's on the, who's been jumping on the webinar. Thank you, Alex. A very interesting presentation. So I think a lot of people have got much. something out from this and I'm sure has uh, everything learned a lot from this. That's brilliant. And uh, thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure. No problem at all. Thanks, Alex. Cheers. See you guys. Cheers. Bye-bye.